growing up, there was one comic book shop <clears throat> back in the early 90s. And that comic book shop apparently disappeared. Um, and I was always into collecting comics back in the early 80s. Uh, actually, I'm going, but I'm going to go back to the 70s. Late 70s, early 80s, and of course went through the 90s and 2000s. I would, I, after graduating from high school, I left the comic book collecting for about two years. When the death of Superman came back in 1993, I was in college in Kingsville. And I woke up one morning saw it on CNN, they were making a big deal. Death of Superman, comic book, issue nine, uh, issue 75. Everybody wanted the first copy, the first printing of uh, Death of Superman. Of course, not everybody reading comic books, but just for the fact that it's the first time they had ever killed Superman. So it was going to be a collector's item from here on end. I, uh, I was able to pick up my copies, and I ran with it. 1983 came, left, and I decided to go into business with my father. So that's when I started learning the aspects of business. What it was to run a business, own a business, be your own boss. Mm -hmm. And my dad had a gas station, which is this year. So I learned everything about business the old school way. I didn't go to school to learn business management. I learned it through my father. So when I got to learning the ropes of running a gas station, which is a very hard business, I said I can basically run any business. I'll open, I can run any business. One day I pitched it to my dad and said, Dad, I'm gonna open a comic book shop. You're crazy. The comic books won't work here in Eagle Pass. It's too small. I said, well, if I don't try, I'll never know. I mean, there hasn't been a comic book shop here in years. Okay. So I was crazy. Let it be. There's something in life is health first. Forget about the rest. It'll fall into place. My dad gets ill. And I decided to close on the gas station after 26 years of business. A couple of months later, I said, you know what, Dad? I'm going to run with the comic book shop. It's not going to work. You're an Eagle Pass. It's too small. I said, yeah, but I saw something back in 2007. This was the beginning of the superhero movies coming in. So this is where Eagle Pass needs something different. So I'm going to do it. I had the location. I have the managing material to run a business. And the way I treat my customers is just, it, it's natural for me. It doesn't, it's not forced. It's, it comes natural. I, I, I have it. I'm born with that. So I ran with it. I opened Heroes to the Rescue from one day to the next. I said, heck with it, I'm going to do it. And I had my own collectibles. So I started with that. That's how Heroes to Rescue started. With uh, that wall of figures. And that was it. Nothing else. A couple of comic books that I had that I was willing to sell for my collection. And that was it. I, my mom and I picked that name. Why? You know, I, I don't know why. It was a week of thinking of what name and what name and and what should we put the name of the store and da-da-da-da. And, and one day, one night, we were just sitting together outside the outside her house and it just came and it's Heroes to the Rescue. And she sounds, that sounds perfect. I said, yeah. After a week of thinking of what we're going to name it, those words just came out of my mouth. And 
That's it, it stayed. I guess the fact that I was buying comic books in San Antonio, I had a subscription in San Antonio. So every title that I was reading was being pulled in a comic book shop in San Antonio. But I had to wait every month or every other month to go pick them up because I just wasn't going to go drive to San Antonio to pick up my comics. So I got pretty much tired of driving back and forth, spending two, three, four hundred dollars on comic books. On top of that, of the gas. So I said, why not open my own shop? So I went to the owner, to that local comic shop in San Antonio, which we had, be, we had became good friends. The owner, actually, not the manager. The owner. And uh, I asked the owner straight out. I said, for a businessman to businessman, what can you tell me or what can you help me with to open a business? I said, wait, wait, wait a minute, Chicho. So we're friends and all, but but you just said it. Businessman to businessman. Where do you plan to open your business? So well, not here in San Antonio. Well, then good. <laughs> then I can help you. Because you're just too nice of a guy, and I hate to go uh, to compete against you. And I, and I got a big smile on my face, just like I have right now. And I said, well, thanks, Adam. He goes, yeah, man, I mean, you know too much. So he gave me a whole bunch of information. I said, he said, here, it's all right here. And I was thrown back by that. Because I wasn't expecting help. And much less from, a, I guess they say, white people. And, uh, and he was the one that helped me. Whereas you can ask a, I guess, brown person for help. And I won't say Mexican because I'm not Mexican. See, a Mexican is born in Mexico. I'm not, I wasn't born in Mexico. I'm an American citizen. Uh, so I'll say brown and whatever colors they want to relate us to. And apparently they won't help. Nobody will help you. So I was thrown back by that when, when that, that man helped me. You have to think business is going to fail. If you think you're going to open a business and succeed, you're going to fail. You see, I had a lot of failures when I opened. They cut off my light. They cut off the water. Rent was always due because I was paying rent to my parents. And I still do. It's, it's, it's rough. Opening a business is hard. And yeah, I thought it was, I was going to fail. Actually, a person from the, from the newsgram in the local newspaper from Eagle Pass became a good friend of mine. He came in here one day. Didn't know who he was, but we became friends. He became a customer. He told me one day, he goes, Chicho, I'll give you six months. <laughs> I said, well, thanks, man. He goes, yeah, Eagle Pass doesn't support Eagle Pass business. I said, I know. I've seen it with the gas station, 26 years of it. It was rare that people supported my dad, rare. And being well known in the city of Eagle Pass. So, so I knew what I was getting into. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm still gonna do it. I'm gonna prove everybody wrong. And and I'm going to show that Eagle Pass does support Eagle Pass business. And I'm going to show people that a comic book shop can make it here in Eagle Pass. It's going to be hard, but I will be able to do it because I'm not a quitter. <laughs> Uh, my first customer had actually passed away, but uh, my other customer that came in after that was Gonzalo Delgado, and he's still a customer till today. 
you know, Eagle Pass has its fair share, but I'm more, I get a lot of people from out of town. Del Rio, Carrizo, Uvalde, Austin, Texas, San Antonio, Laredo, Mexico, of course, Piedras Negras. And the reason they come down is because we're such a small town, but because I order, or we, we order books, and there's a lot of first printings. So this is where the gravy is. Your first printings are the ones that are gonna be always worth money. So I've, mm -hmm. I've heard that a lot from several people, and especially heard that this weekend from a gentleman from San Antonio. He said it was a very unique store, and, and it makes me feel good because we've tried our best to have everything sorted out and clean and that's just the way Dad raised us. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to make this as it looks very unique, very, very out of the norm here in Eagle Pass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite superhero and why? Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> it is. It is. It is a tough one. There's there's actually several in my bucket list. I mean, God kept in America being American. You know, standing up for the red, white, and blue. And then you got Superman, you know, uh, the Boy Scout. I mean, oh. my favorite comic ever read. Wow. Civil War, Old Man Logan. I mean, for, for as long as I've been reading comic books, I'll wipe the tears off my eyes because I'm getting sentimental. For as long as I've been reading comics, it's just there's just so many. But with the artwork and the stories they're putting out today, it's just so amazing that we don't have more customers because people think uh, a comic book is for children. Yeah. And they don't seem to understand that it's not. I mean... There's a lot of adult stuff, image comics. I mean, Jesus Christ, if, if people would actually take the time to read, it, it, it's, it open portals mm -hmm. in your life. It's just amazing. It's cool. I love it. But of course there's Batman, there's mm -hmm. Superman, there's just Captain America. So many good stories, but of those two, those were probably my favorites. Batman, that's a no-brainer. He sells a lot. Batman sells a lot. Uh, Spider-Man, amazing Spider-Man. Peter Parker, he's just, uh, he just, it's Spidey. I mean, it's every every kid's superhero. Uh, they, it just depends on on who or what is out that week or what's vibing on the internet but uh, to be honest with you it's just it's Batman, Spidey, Superman, Wolverine, Thor it could be anybody it just it just depends on what's hot but um, but those titles they sell regardless I'm not into technology and I chose to be that way you see, I was taught, like I said, old school way. I don't need a computer to get me through life. I don't even know how to send an email. And I don't care. <laughs> I, I really don't. And people might think I'm stupid. People might think I'm whatever. But I don't, I don't care. I don't need a computer to get me through life. And um, yes, it's taken a, it takes away business from the, the local comic book shop. But there's nothing like holding a book and going through a book and actually reading it and enjoying it. And then you say, wow, I have Crosswind number one. And I bought it for $3.99. Week later, if it's a hit, that $3.99 is no longer $3.99. It's 10, 15, 20 bucks. It's sad that people want to read everything online, but well, because I understand they want to save money. One, two, they're lazy. La yeah, 
three, they, they know there's no comic book shop in their area. And everybody tells me again, like what we're talking about now, that the computers and is it affect the business? Of course it affects the business. Amazon affects everybody's business. Yeah. eBay affects everybody's business. Does the government see it that way? No. Should they see it that way? Yes. Because we pay taxes. We pay light. And I, I'm, not, I'm not taking anything away from eBay and Amazon. I'm not. Because I know they pay employees and they employ a lot of people. But small business is the backbone of our economy. And without small business, there is nothing in the United States of America. So they need to see that part. You destroy small business, you destroy America in general. Mm -hmm. You cannot have Amazon and eBay take over everything because not everybody wants to buy Amazon and eBay. Everybody wants, some people want to hold stuff in their hands. Some people want to go and see the items, not just online and click mm -hmm. and click. And what if that one day the internet goes down? Or everything goes down. There's no longer that. There's no 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 longer that screen. There's no longer that click. There's no people will go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I I so yeah I I I see, I see the internet a big factor in, in in killing business. It's like any business. It, it took me five years to actually see the the to start reaping the benefits from it. Uh, after my fifth year, they no longer cut my light off or my water, okay. so I started making it. And I started seeing the, the glory of business, of um, finally doing something on my own. If it, I've always said one thing, if it's not broke, why fix it? So I'll, I'll probably stay as I am. I don't think I've ever thought about just closing up and just packing up everything and go. And of course, I would like to pass this on to my kids. It's just that I want them to educate themselves as well. They can have a business uh, just like I grew up, but there's nothing like having a degree in a, in a certain field of study where you can have your job and have your business on the side. It's just the extra income. But the way I see our econ economy today I don't think it's a, it's a good deal to just survive off your business unless you have a business that strives every day to give you money. Mm -hmm. This doesn't give you money every day. Um, what do I want this place to be in the future? I don't know. People drive by it every day and they see it and they're like, well, what can be in there? You know, it's not so small. And then they park and they finally get down and and they come in and they're like, their jaw drops. They're like, oh my God, there's just so much to see. So I like the fact that it's a comic book shop. I like the fact that I see those people's jaw drop. I like the fact that people come in and are like, Jesus Christ, man, you have so much cool stuff we didn't even know existed. And we drove them by for five years, six years, and we never had the goal to stop. I'm glad I stopped by today, and now I'm your customer. <laughs> so I, li I like it to be a comic book shop. You know, although my brother's been asking me lately if we won't put the gas station again in honor of my dad. So it's in the air. If mm -hmm. maybe have both comic book shop and a gas station be something very different and unique. Mm -hmm. And upstairs I'll open a coffee shop or a bar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Name it the Bat Cave. I don't know. <laughs> Probably my name. who I am
the man that raised me. Um, the man that taught me business. My dad, my father. I lost him a couple of months ago. But uh, without him, I would have known every, any, anything about business. So I have a lot to thank for him for that. Um, the fact that I have a family and bills keep on showing up every month um, and the fact that I love being around all these superheroes I mean I close up the shop every day and I talk to these guys you know I'm closing up the shop you all take care of the shop play jump fly do whatever you all gonna do in here just don't destroy the place when I come open tomorrow morning, be be clean as I'm leaving it, leaving it today. Sure, I come in every day and it's still clean. So, I guess they do whatever they do and they leave everything tip top shape when I get back. So, but I like being here. This is my fortitude. This is my escape route to the real world. I guess get to see superheroes every day. It's awesome.